I've been resisting the urge to jump on the ChatGPT train for a while now, but I think creating this video was inevitable because there's so much going on with ChatGPT and I wanted to share my experience. Now, if you don't know, ChatGPT is a language processing model. It's basically a chat bot that you can ask questions, you can talk, you know, laugh, have a good time, tell some jokes back and forth, and you can basically force it to do all of your homework and assignments, any projects you possibly might need help with, just tell it to do it, and what could possibly go wrong, right? Well, there's actually a few things you should be concerned with, especially when it comes to writing code, and I'm going to talk about some of those in this video. We'll start off with talking about some of the pros and how ChatGPT can really effectively improve your coding experience. On the flip side, it can make things go terribly wrong if you're not cautious. Now, we're not talking about, you know, AI taking over the world and killing everybody, okay? Much worse. We're talking about syntax errors and just logical errors that don't make sense. You will probably get these from ChatGPT if you don't pay attention, so you probably want to cross-reference everything you're getting from ChatGPT. I think the most clear benefit from ChatGPT is having it generate the starter code for some project. For example, here's a prompt asking ChatGPT to build out a program to take some numbers from the user. These are the grades for a student, there will be multiple students, and we don't know how many ahead of time. Store it using objects and then ultimately write it out to a file. So this is an example of what ChatGPT can do, literally generate the exact code you need for a project. It's very impressive. The cool thing though is that it has a memory of the conversation you've had, so it can take a look at this code and make changes as needed. So for example, let's say we wanted to change the data structure used, you could say something like use a deck instead of a vector, and you don't have to re-say everything, it knows from the previous conversation what changes you need to make, and it will make those changes. So this is really handy. So personally, that has been the most helpful thing for me, taking some idea and getting some code to start working with it. Now, the other thing that ChatGPT is great for is learning. So if you go through this code, you might find some code that you find confusing. And what you can do is you can copy it and you can probably just press enter like so, or you can specify explain this to a dummy. And here we go, it gives every single detail of what that code does. If you want to, you know, basically do that for the whole thing, you could say explain everything, or you could just say add comments to the code. And I imagine you'd be able to take some code you have and have ChatGPT create test cases to basically automate some of the creation of automated testing and to just validate your logic. The third great thing from ChatGPT is the ability to generate some ideas. So for example, you could say, what other things did I not consider? How can I improve this code with design patterns, etc.? And it'll give you a list of ideas. And it looks like it brought in some design pattern that you can look into and possibly rewrite this code. And heck, why don't you just have ChatGPT do that for you? So you can ask it to do that and it'll just go through and make those changes. And as you can tell, this gets pretty complicated pretty quick. So it's quite impressive that it's able to keep everything in line. And that's assuming all this code is correct, which I have not verified. And there is actually probably a pretty good chance some of it's not perfect. Not sure why, but I've always found it fascinating when people make really complicated programs to do something very simple. And ChatGPT is great at this. So here's an example of generating a Hello World program. And now you could say something stupid like, same exact output, but make the code more complicated. Close enough. And here we have a new example. You can take this concept and just continue by saying more complicated, more complicated, just to see what ends up happening. All right, let's ask it to do 10 times more complicated. And now you can see we're getting to some pretty complicated code. Although this example is pointless, the idea is you can ask it for something, you know, maybe some ideas or some better code. And then you can keep elaborating on that by saying, hey, give me more examples, more examples. And it'll just keep going. It's like really great for idea generation. 
So here's another prompt. Create a C++ application that will check if a Boolean variable is true or false, but does so by calling a bool function to check the value, and that function will call two other functions, return true and return false, which do just that. So this is another stupid example, but it's kind of funny. So here's how you can check if something's true or false in a really complicated way. And now let's make it 10 times harder. So I encourage you, at your next job interview where you have to work with Booleans, go ahead and create some code like this just to make it as complicated as you possibly can. And what you need to do is you just need to continue writing it until the person interrupts you. So just assume you're, you're getting somewhere and just keep going until basically you run out of time. Now this is all fun, but there are some serious flaws largely around the fact that ChatGPT has basically unlimited confidence, so it'll say something as if it's 100% fact, truth, and it's actually the complete opposite, but it often mixes this in with like 95% truth, so it's really hard to tell if you're getting 100% accuracy or not. When I started with this, I wasn't really planning on making a video, so I didn't keep track of all of these occurrences, but I started to keep track of a few, and I just thought I would show you some. Here's an example where I give a very simple class in C++ and ask it to create a custom constructor. It then goes and takes that code and adds the custom constructor right here and explains how to use that constructor passing in the values to the new point objects. But then it proceeds to say, you can still use the default constructor to create point objects with X and Y initialized to zero which I didn't say anything about the default constructor, so it just felt that it was necessary to bring this up, but this is 100% false. If you wanted the default constructor, you would need to create that manually then. At this point, I had to correct ChatGPT, saying how things actually worked, to which it said, you're correct, and then it goes and corrects the code, adding the default constructor in here, and now creating a point object without any data passed in. Sometimes it'll just give you code that's incorrect or won't compile. Here's an example using uint max saying that you'll need to include it from standard int.h. And I will admit my prompts are usually terrible, but it's limits.h bro is able to pick up, hey, yeah, that was wrong. It's actually from limits.h. And then it goes ahead and gives a corrected example. So I don't think it's actually doing any compiling. It just looks at your code and, you know, assumes the most logical output. Sometimes those assumptions are wrong. Here's an example where it just got the name wrong. So the indirection operator, the and sign, well, this is actually the address of operator. So it's used to get the address of something. The indirection operator, on the other hand, is the asterisk used to dereference a pointer. Here's another example in C programming where we created a size three, but I used a semicolon here. And it says the code you provided should compile without errors. However, that semicolon is going to break this because it's like putting a semicolon inside of the square brackets. Here is that same program and you can see it's expecting a square bracket because basically the way it sees it is three semicolon and it's saying, hey, you forgot to put your square bracket. It'll also occasionally make corrections where those corrections don't actually make any change at all. So in this one, it says found arrow next is assigned new should be changed to found arrow next is assigned new. Same exact thing, same concept down here as well. Unless I'm just blind, I cannot see the difference between these. Now, I did want to mention that these out-of-context images might not be 100% authentic because here's a scenario where I asked it specifically to call the plus operator the minus operator. So it's not really fair to take an image out of context and assume it's 100% the authentic chat GPT. Although it did take a little bit of wrangling to get it to do this. These are just a few examples where things didn't quite add up, so I think it's probably smart to always cross-reference whatever ChatGPT gives you with, you know, some searches on the internet or taking that code yourself and running through it, making sure it compiles and all the logic is correct. Overall, it's a valuable tool, but if you trust it entirely, you're going to actually hurt yourself worse than if you didn't use it at all. Let me know your thoughts. What experiences have you had with ChatGPT or other AI tools? definitely would appreciate because I may do some more videos like this in the future as AI continues to develop. So thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe. Peace out. By the way, this entire video script was generated by ChatGPT.